Hello everyone, it's so good to have you connected with us today and we're sharing on four pillars of financial success. We spent the last couple of days talking about what you believe and it's important what you believe. First of all about God. You need to know that God is our source and he appeared to Abraham in Genesis chapter 17 said I am the almighty God. I'm the many breasted God. Walk before me and be perfect and I will multiply you exceedingly. So when you begin to understand who God is, come into a personal relationship with him, you'll begin to see who God is revealed in your own life. Then he said in Genesis chapter 22 verse 14, I am Jehovah Jireh, I am the Lord your provider. Now we understand that's when Abraham offered Isaac and then God uh, made a ram get caught in the thicket with his horns and he brought that ram that's a type of Christ and so we understand that provision is forgiveness for our sins healing for our bodies peace for our minds but it's also finances for poverty praise God and so God is our source he's our provider then we said what do you believe about yourself you need to know that it's God's will for you to prosper Third John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. We talked about Psalm 35, verse 27, that says the Lord delights in the prosperity of his servant. Now, when you understand that and get a abundance mentality, you'll begin to flourish and move into you know what God has for you. So the first key we talked about was what you believe. Today we're going to be talking about what you give. That's the second key. I believe we'll talk about this today and tomorrow. Giving is connected to receiving. You know Jesus said this in Luke 6 38, give and it shall be given to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give to your bosom. And when we get involved in giving and receiving it will be a blessing. You know, they did a, a study years ago of the Fortune 500 companies and over 90% of the Fortune 500 companies in America, in the world, uh, live by this principle of giving. They were givers. And yet they say that only 20% of the church is actually involved in tithing or giving at least 10%. And we wonder why the church many times struggles financially. It's because we don't live by the principles of the Bible. So we're going to be sharing about these today. Aaron, do you got some stuff to share? Yeah, giving is awesome. I think giving is one of the greatest things we can do as believers. It, it, it's actually uh, putting action to our faith. If you believe that God wants to prosper you, that he wants to take care of you and provide for you, you're going to be a giver. That's how you put action to your faith in God, that he is a provider. If you believe that he's a provider, you are going to take that action of giving. And so we want to be sowers. And in our church, we uh, I encourage my people who receive offerings not to focus specifically on tithing. I believe that is a New Testament principle. Abraham started at 400 years before the law, but we want him to focus on sowing. Because if you focus on sowing, then there is a harvest. And in 2 Corinthians 8 and 2 Corinthians chapter 9, which is the largest New Testament directive on giving, the Bible uh, primarily talks about sowing and reaping. And so anybody knows if you're a farmer, you got to sow a harvest, sow a seed to get a harvest. And if you want harvest, you got to sow. Praise God. And so we like to make the focus on sowing. I'm going to begin today. We're going to talk about some Old Testament principles of giving. We're going to actually go to uh, begin talking about an Old Testament principle to Hebrews chapter 7, which is comparing uh, the law and grace. And we're going to talk about how Abram gave to Melchizedek, who was a type of Christ. And so if you got your Bible, read in Hebrews chapter 7. It says this in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 1. This Melchizedek, king of uh, pr uh, priest of the Most High God, king of Salem, who met Abram returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom Abram gave a tenth part of all, being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that king of Salem, which is king of peace. And so he's talking about Melchizedek was type of Christ, and Abram gave him. He did not pay him. He gave him. So this is very important, because a lot of people say, well, I paid my tithes. And the only time the Bible talks about paying tithes. It's talking about Levi right here in Hebrews chapter 7, the first 10 verses. And when Levi paid tithes, it's not talking about something that Levi did. It says Levi paid tithes in Abraham. It's talking about what Abraham did. 
And so Abraham's gift satisfied the debt of many generations. But Jesus' gift satisfied the debt of every generation. And so I want you to understand that. So when I do my giving, I give out of my heart. God is the greatest giver, and he's living on the inside of me. We talked a little bit from 2 Corinthians chapter 9. God loves a cheerful giver. We had and, a question that just came in. Um, it asks, um, Joseph Z actually asks, how is tithing a New Testament principle? Well, when you look right here in Hebrews chapter 7, it talks about tithing. And so it talks about, uh, when we look at this, how that... Um, Abraham gave a tenth and Levi paid tithes into Abraham and Levi was commanded to take tithes in the Old Testament of the people. But here it says this in verse 8 of Hebrews chapter 7. Without all contradiction, the uh, less is blessed of the better. Speaking of Melchizedek who blessed Abraham, here men die that receive tithes. Speaking of the Le Levitical priesthood. But there he receives them of whom it is witnessed that he lives. That's talking about Jesus. This is one reason I'm a tither, praise God. I like to say I'm a tither, I'm a giver, I do not lack ability, I do not lack opportunity, and I will never lack for money, praise God. And so I give, and, and I do my giving, I don't legalistically tithe, I give much, much more than a tithe, I give far beyond a tithe. But it says that he, there he receives him that lives forever. It's talking about we have to have a new priesthood because we have a new covenant and Jesus is the great high priest of this new covenant that receives our tithes. Glory to God. That makes me excited about this principle of tithing and giving. Praise God. There's two things I really like about the principle of tithing. Um, the first one is it's a percentage. Like you're, you're um, saying I'm dedicating this 10% this to God. So God is actually... Percentages um, relate to partnership. Like if you were to buy stock in a company, you would own a percentage of that company, and you want that company to do well because you're a partner with that company. The same same thing with tithing. You're saying, God, I want you to partner with me in my finances. So God, he's he wants to bless you because he's a partner with you in your in your financial prosperity. I, I believe that's a principle with tithing. Also, another thing about tithing we see here in Hebrews is, is that there is a multi-generational effect on tithing, on giving. Like when you, when you decide to be a giver, to be a tither, it doesn't only bless you, but it blesses generations after you. You know, my dad is a giver and it's, it's, you know, that blessing that comes from that, it's been poured out on me and my brothers, but I'm a giver too. And I've seen when I step out in faith and give, it blesses even my next generation, my son Fisher. Recently, um, um, just a few weeks ago here at church on a Wednesday night, um, I, I, I gave my tithe. It was around $1,000 um, for, for that month, but my wife Heather wanted to put in an extra $1,000 that night. And, uh, you know, during this uh, virus, this crisis, you know, we've had a couple of financial hiccups, but I I said, yeah, let's let's go for it. I I um I don't argue with my wife when she wants to give a big gift. So we put in an extra thousand dollars that night, and just a couple days later, I sold a, a a flute that I had for sale on eBay. I bought it several years ago. Um, it's a flute I bought for ten thousand dollars, but I sold it for fifteen thousand dollars, and um, made about five thousand dollars profit on that. And I believe that was. Um, a result of us giving that extra big offering that night. You know, this this flute, I sold it probably in one of the worst times to sell a musical instrument during during this <laughs> economic crisis. I sold it to a, a musician in New York City who plays Broadway shows. You know, there are no Broadway shows going on right now, so it's just a miracle that, you know, a New York City musician bought this, you know, very nice instrument. Yeah. But she was really excited to get it. It's it's a great instrument. It was a blessing to her. I knew it would be over close to $30,000. So you had she, the thing on the market for four years. Yeah, she was excited. About it, but it, it also blessed, um, like I said, it's a, there's a multi-generational impact from that. Um, our next door neighbor, their kids are, are teenagers now, but they have a really nice playground set to buy. It'd be over $1,000. But they said, hey, you know, we'd like to just bless you guys with this. We want to give it to you. So we just dragged it across the, the property line, just moved it 20 feet. You know, I got nine people from church here uh, <laughs> last week to just move it over. And, um, you know, all, all of our friends that have little kids are jealous because all the playgrounds are closed right now. But Fisher has his own playground with a slide, three swings, like a little fort. He's eating lunch out there. Stuff. But So God, this blessing, it's a multi-generational thing. Yeah. And you know, when Heather encouraged you to give that offering, she did it as a seed to sow 
mm -hmm. to sell your house. Yeah. And you had you had lost the contract on your mm -hmm. house because of the virus. Somebody had bought it for that had an appointment at the Air Force Academy because of the virus. They canceled their appointment. Mm -hmm. And so you didn't even have your house back on the market. And like the day after that, somebody came and wanted to see your house. Mm -hmm. And you didn't have it on the market. And they, and, and they saw your house and put a contract on it two days later as soon as you put it back on the market. And praise God, that deal was going through. So did you know, um, that, again, this is why we encourage people to give as a seed that you sow. Aaron and Heather are not only tithers, they're givers. I'm a tither. I'm a giver. I do not lack opportunity. I do not lack ability. And money comes to me. Praise God. You ought to speak that in your own life. I, I learned that from Kenneth E. Hagin. It works. Praise God. Yeah, God's and God's economy, it's different than the world's economy. Right now, the world is saying, you know, there's scarcity going on. There's panic going on. Be afraid. Get all you can. Can all you get. Sit on your can. Don't be investing. Don't be giving. But now, now is the time. Now God's economy is different than the world's economy. God's economy says, "Give, and it will be given to you in greater measure." Amen. Now the world says, "Hey, if you give, that's going to negate your total account." God says, "Hey, give, and I'm going to add to your account." You know, we've been in this uh, virus thing where they encourage churches to close, and we actually for six uh, Sundays did not have services live at the church. We were live here. Uh, and we were e uh, live, live streaming streaming. the services out to all our congregants. And we believe that that was wisdom because we didn't know where things were happening. But then we believe that God spoke to us and told us to open the doors. And we were the first largest, larger church in Colorado to open, I believe. And do you know what? We emailed the health department. We told them exactly what we were going to do. Um, and we were very respectful about it, but we just believed it was God. We saw not only does the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States back us, the uh, Attorney General of the U.S. was backing us, and we saw on the CDC website how we could do that and operate within their parameters and have social distancing, hand sanitizers, the doors blocked open, we didn't have any kid service. But, you know, we went th through this time, and we never quit giving. I just wrote several thousand dollars of extra checks today to give to people, praise God, and missions and ministries and different ones. You know, we've never quit giving. We've increased our giving, and God's increased the income of the church. He's causing a harvest to come. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So don't quit giving. Yeah, keep, keep tapping into God's economy. Don't be so concerned about the world's economy. Keep... Keep following, you know, biblical, scriptural principles for finances. Keep leaning on these four pillars of financial success. You know, believing, giving, working, and stewarding. Yeah, so when we talk about giving, another aspect, you know, we had this question about the tithe. How is it New Testament? Well, we said it's New Testament from here, right in Hebrews chapter 7. It's also New Testament from the teachings of Jesus. Jesus, when the Pharisees and Sadducees, different people came to him and said, well, we tithe and we do all this. He said, you should do that, but don't leave the other out. And so, you know, I believe that giving is the principal thing in the New Testament, sowing and reaping, 2 Corinthians 8, 2 Corinthians 9. I believe you ought to start with at least 10%. We'll talk about that when we get to the stewardship part. But I believe tithing is New Testament. I don't legalistically tithe, but I'll tell you what, I give far beyond 10% more like 30%, praise God, sometimes 50%. But you know what? You can't beat God given. And I have proved this over and over again. When Barbara and I first got married 36 years ago, we just celebrated our 36th anniversary yesterday. When we first got married, I was, I was making $800 a month and giving $200 a month to the church. I was giving $80 tithe and $100 to the building program and $20 an offering. You know what? I kept my giving up. And you know what? God supported my habit. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says there are those that have addicted themselves to giving. And if you get addicted to giving, God will support your habit. Yeah. And I, I've just seen big breakthrough when I've um, followed God's call concerning giving. I remember, um, I think I mentioned this a, a day or two ago, but when I was in Houston, I just finished my master's and I was believing God to pay off all, all my student loans. I had about $25,000 in loans, but um I was at church one Sunday morning, and um, I felt God told me to just give all the cash I had in my wallet to the woman sitting next to me. I had, you know, eighty-three, eighty-five dollars in my wallet, and I just gave it to her, and, and she just started crying. I know it really blessed her and touched her, and 
you know, I just felt God's compassion, Hallelujah. you know, leading me to do that. But as I was leaving church, um, I went to Lakewood Church, Joel Osteen's church, you know, tens of thousands of people that go there. But when I was leaving, a man approached me and said, hey, God told me to give you all this money I have in my pocket. And, and it was almost exactly the same amount of money, it was about Praise $83. God. But um, from that, you know, I, I obeyed God and, and you know, he used that to minister to someone. But, you know, he just confirmed that I heard from him right yeah. away i asked that person you know did, did you see what i did earlier in service he's like no i've, I've I, I didn't see that that's really amazing <laughs> you know so. it proves this principle this principle is in proverbs and it says he that gives to the poor lends to the lord that which is he he has given he will repay him mm -hmm. so you know you gave to somebody that was in need that was poor and god repaid you immediately yeah praise one god now, that's one-to-one. -one. That's giving to the poor. A lot of Christians get caught up in this. They see a need and they'll give to the poor, but they won't sow into a ministry that's thriving and prospering. I give a lot of money to really prosperous ministries. Yeah. What are the different types of giving? Well, there's tithing. That's giving a tenth. That's giving to your storehouse where you get uh, fed from. There's offering. That's above and beyond ten tenths, wherever you feel led. Um, there's alms. That's giving to the poor. And, but there's also this principle of just sowing. And I, I like to do most of my giving as sowing. In fact, I count it all sowing. <laughs> Praise God. And because on sowing, there is a hundredfold harvest. When we sowed, when, when I was in the farm, we would sow a bushel to the acre of wheat in our, in our uh, winter wheat, and we would irrigate that on the irrigated part, and we would get 100-fold we would get a hundred bushel harvest nearly every year. I got it. Praise mm -hmm. God. God blessed us and helped us. And you know, that's a, that's a promise mm -hmm. that we have. And so I believe that we can, we can receive it. It talks about sowing and reaping, 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. I want to go back and look at a couple other principles. Um, Aaron brought this up in Genesis chapter 14 when Abraham gave to Melchizedek, who's a type of Christ. This is 400 years before the law. Abraham's called the father of our faith that Melchizedek blessed Abram before he gave. Is that correct? Yeah, the blessing happened. I, I like looking at the order of this story in Genesis 14, starting in verse 18. Uh, we can read it really quick, actually. It says, Genesis 14, 18, if you want to turn in your Bibles there, it says, Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God most high. So he's a type of Christ. You see him bring out bread and wine, a type of communion, um, Jesus' body and blood and uh, what happens verse 19 it says and he blessed him and said blessed be abram of god most high possessor of heaven and earth and blessed be god most high who has delivered your hand your enemies into your hand and then he it says abram gave him a tithe of all so the blessing happened first and then the, that gift of the tithe came after so we're not giving in order to be blessed we're blessed and because we're blessed we're givers praise god you know, if you're born again, you're blessed. Ashley Terry, as my good friend, says this. He says there's only two kinds of believers. There's people that are blessed and they know it, and there's people that are blessed and they don't know it. And you know what? If you're born again, you're blessed. You're blessed with every spiritual blessing in heaven and places in Christ. And if you get a blessed mentality, we talked about this, you're not going to have a challenge given. Praise God. If I didn't think I was blessed, I would have been sowing thousands of dollars this morning. I, I just wrote out the checks and said, send this to this one, send to this. You know, and it's not like I got a lot of extra money in the account, but I am believing God for harvest, and I give all the time, and harvest comes to me all the time. Well, one, one uh, good way to think about giving and, and where, to, where to put your gift is to think of it in terms of investing. You're investing in oh, the glory kingdom to God. of God. Like, that's one thing. My, my dad's a great investor. He's uh, in lots of ways, but with your giving... Um, sowing into the kingdom of God, you need to think of it as an investment. You want to see a return on your investment. You want to see a return, you know, not only to yourself, but just in the kingdom. You want to see lives saved. You want to see people find deliverance, people be healed. So, so I would, you know, just, you know, spread out your investment. You know, it's good to give Praise some almsgiving, God. but, but um, put Amen. your investment in, in places where they are seeing people healed, seeing people saved, seeing people delivered. Seeing yeah. growth. Yeah, you know, uh, there's this principle in Deuteronomy 26, I believe it is, but in the Old Testament, in the law, Deuteronomy is the second law, that when they gave, they brought it to this specific place. The, the Lord said, you bring your tithe where I put my name. Mm. And where does God put his name? Well, if you look at Mark 16, he says, go preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow that those who believe in my name. 
They'll cast out devils. They'll speak in tongues. They'll have divine protection and they'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Praise God. The place where God puts his name, his spirit is moving. People are being saved and healed and filled with the Holy Ghost, set free from the devil's power. Glory to God. I don't want to give my seed in dead ground. Because, you know, if you, if you go sow your seed as a farmer in an alkali bed, you're not going to get a harvest. Mm -hmm. I mean, you may get a few sprouts up, you, but you'd be lucky to get almost nothing. You won't even get what you sowed back. And so if you're sowing in dead ground, you're not going to get a harvest. But if you sow in live, fertile, good soil, praise God, you're going to get a harvest. Yeah, I think we should be wise with our, our giving. You know, just like we're wise with how we steward our money, wise with where we work, how we work, when, you know, we need to be wise with working, but we also need to be wise with giving. You know, we talked about Abraham was a giver. But then in, I, in Genesis 26, his son Isaac learned from him, just like my son. I taught all my sons. Aaron, Andrew, and Peter to be tithers and givers. And every one of them is blessed. They're all in different fields of life. Aaron was blessed as a musician. Now he's blessed in the ministry. Andrew's blessed as an engineer. Praise God, he's one of the most blessed young men. 30 years old, multimillionaire. We just had a major downturn with all this mess in the world in the oil market. Oil actually went to negative $35 a barrel. I didn't even know it could do that. It's back up to about $10 a barrel or something now. But Andrew is super blessed, and God has still blessed him. He just got approved to build a new gas plant up in North Dakota. He's the head of the project. He's part owner of his company. Blessed, blessed. But Peter, in the middle of this mess, in, he's in Singapore, right south of China, where all this stuff is going on. He was over 11 countries of Burger King for 3G Capital. In the middle of the mess, their stock went from $79 a share to $28 a share. While that was happening, they put Peter over 16 countries, gave him five more countries, and raised his wages phenomenally. You know what? Your blessing is not dependent on the world around you. Your blessing is dependent on the God who lives inside of you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We see an example of this in Genesis 26. Isaac sowed in the land in the time of famine and re reaped the same year. This is Genesis 26 verse 12 a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him and it says in verse 13 the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great hallelujah for he had possession hallelujah he had possession God wants the church to have possession it's time that we take rise up you see here's another principle you got to understand authority if you're going to really operate in financial prosperity but in Psalm 115, verse 16, it says, The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has he given to the children of men. This earth is not the devil's place. This earth is our place. And we have authority on the earth. So he sowed, he reaped a hundredfold in a time of famine, and the Lord blessed him. And he grew great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flocks and of herds. And it says, and he had a great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him. You know what? God wants to bless you so much, he makes you envy of the world. I know some ministers that are mad at other ministers, and it's just pure jealousy. <laughs> it's terrible. It's a terrible thing. But you know what? God wants to bless you so much, he makes you the envy of the world. Hallelujah. Yeah, well, um, just really practically, I think it's, you know, here, here at the church, here at Karis Christian Center with uh, Grace for Today, our television ministry, we actually have a lot of people who help partner with this ministry. And I, I really believe it's awesome ground to sow in. I actually started tithing to the church here about five years before I moved here. And I saw just tremendous growth in my personal finances. Amen. And I didn't even know that I'd be coming here to be a pastor someday. But when I, when I started partnering with this ministry, God just brought tremendous growth to my finances. And um, if you'd like to partner with our church, partner with this ministry, partner with Grace for Today, you can call right now. We'd, we'd, we'll take your call. We'll set you up. You can give a one-time gift. You can be an ongoing monthly partner. There's different ways to partner with this ministry. But I believe like when you give, when you partner, when you sow into ground, you, you, you're a co-reaper with us. Praise as God. As we see the kingdom grow, as we see... Uh, just God's kingdom here on earth, girl. You're, you're a partner with And you that. know what? We're sharing these gifts. We're not just... I, I just wrote a check for $2,000 to a missionary in Mexico. Mm -hmm. I wrote another check to a, 
you know, a ministry that just takes care of people and, and takes care of the poor. I, two ministries, actually, this morning. And I wrote another check to a minister that's a prophetic ministry. And, you know, we, we just, we have this opportunity to sow. We get to sow. You know, you, when you see this, we talked about Abraham. He's the father of our faith. He, he gave the tent. We talked about Isaac. He sowed in the land of time of famine. Then we see in Genesis 28, Jacob bowed a vow saying, if God will be with me and keep me in this way, I go, I'll give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone I've set up a pill. You know, Jacob vowed a vow to give to God a tenth when he was running from Esau. He had almost nothing. And you know what? God multiplied him so much when he came back at, into the land after 14 years that he gave his brother Esau a gift worth over a half a million dollars in today's time. So Abraham was blessed. Isaac was blessed. Jacob was blessed. I want to take it on down to Jesus was blessed and were blessed. Abraham, yeah. Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Jesus, and us. We are the seed of Abraham. We're heirs of this new covenant. Yeah, I love Praise that. God. You know, when, when you're a giver, you can tap into that multi-generational blessing. Just You're not the only one who's going to be blessed. It's going to affect generations Hallelujah. after you. So I love Hallelujah. that. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you know what? You, you, you just want to get involved in giving and receiving. Mm -hmm. And you know what? If you do it, it'll be a blessing to you. My father taught me when I was a little bitty boy to tithe. Praise God, I did that. I did that when I got my first paycheck when I was like 13 years old for driving the tractor all summer. Praise God. I still remember taking a $130 check to church. Praise God. And you know what? God has blessed me. I have never missed a meal. I've never not paid a bill. God has helped me over and over and over again. And he keeps doing it. And he is no respecter of person. He's only respecter of faith. Bless you.